Hey everybody, how's it going? There's two of us here. Whoa! It's like we stepped into an alternate universe and like we can both coexist in at this the same universe. time. Yeah, isn't that wild, guys? I'm excited because we're here to talk about canceled DC movies, movies that you will probably never see. I'm way too excited about that. I know, but like the prospect of them also makes me like very excited because mm. it's like, what if? Yeah, what and if some of day? them maybe one day could still kind of turn around and get made and maybe be good. Oh, that would be dope. As long as Zack Snyder isn't involved. You know, some people are gonna be mad that you said that. Have you seen his recent work? Have you not seen the leaks? All of the leaks that he's leaking? Uh, his own leaks? Uh, uh, <laughs> dying inside. All right, let's get to this list. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we should say our names though. Oh <laughs> yeah. By the way, I'm Kelly. And I'm Sasha, and you're watching Top 10 Nerd. I never say my name in a video. Really? Yeah, I just assume there's always gonna be the name thing underneath me, so. Maybe that's hey. why some of them get it wrong. Yeah, it's Pauli, by the way, not Paoli. <laughs> Number 10, Cyborg. So Cyborg has definitely moved up in terms of team affiliation in the last few decades, moving from Teen Titans founding member to one of the Justice League core, a status that was also granted to him in the DCEU, where the character made his debut in the 2017 film. There was a lot riding on this, a lot of potential sequels and spin-offs that either came to naught or were trapped in development hell like Ezra Miller's Flash film. Another film that was slated to come out was Cyborg, and actually recently at the time of this recording, some leaked images from the Snyder Cut of Justice League have been released, featuring Cyborg. Snyder is really pushing to get that cut released. And fans are bummed because the Cyborg movie at the time of this recording has been shelved and Ray Fisher is no longer set to reprise the role. So if you loved this version of Cyborg or at least wanted to see more, then alas, this is no longer on the horizon. The Justice League movie actually collapsed the DCEU, which is now the worlds of DC, even though everyone just calls it the DCEU still, because why not? But is it? Is it? I don't know what it is anymore. I don't know anymore. It's very confusing. Moving on to number 9, Zatanna. In 2005, writer Hadley Davis announced that she had written a live action comedy treatment for Zatanna, one of DC's magical superheroes. Davis, who is most well known for writing the brilliant Michelle Trachtenberg figure skating film Ice Princess, never confirmed whether there was studio interest, and the concept of a Zatanna film essentially slipped into oblivion after that. Now it's safe to assume that any efforts on that project were altogether abandoned. On the plus side though, there is still hope for Zatanna fans. Rumor has it that the character will likely appear in the Justice League dark film that's allegedly in the works for the DCEU, or Worlds of DC, or whatever it is called, which would likely have her rubbing shoulders with the likes of Constantine and Deadman, so that's pretty promising. At number 8, Lobo, the main man himself. He was set to have a big live action debut directed by Guy Ritchie. This was supposed to happen in 2009, after Warner Brothers saw the success of Iron Man and sensed that a new age of superhero films may be on the horizon. So they were interested in Guy Ritchie. There's not much about this, and it kind of vanished, but it's not even the only time this adaptation has been pitched. In fact, it was being talked about as recently as 2018. There were rumors that it was still in development and that maybe Michael Bay would direct it, and potentially it could star The Rock. But then in 2019, they were like, nope, that's not happening because, drum roll, Lobo is getting his own DC show. And there's this thing that these companies have about characters being on the big and small screen at the same time. They'll make exceptions, but there is a low grade concern about confusing viewers. So, with a series in the pipeline and appearances on Krypton, the big bad's big screen chances have dwindled. For now, who knows what the future holds? Whatever it is, please know sexy boy band Lobo. I don't want it. He can go hang out with boy band Namor. Up next, number seven. Jack Black's Green Lantern. Back in 2004, comic book films were having a rough time. Halle Berry just won a Razzie for Catwoman. Blade Trinity was a disappointment. And The Punisher got a rather peachy take released up on the big screen. And to make matters worse, Warner Brothers decided that they wanted to do a Green Lantern film. This was a while before Ryan Reynolds had been considered for Hal Jordan. And instead, after seeing more serious superhero movies flounder like Daredevil, the studio wanted a comedic actor to play the hero. And after the success of 2003's School of Rock, Jack Black was on the radar. Now the film did not get far. A script was completed, but the film never made it out of the development stage. There was also a lot of heat online over it, to the point where the screenwriter Robert Smigel had said that Black was never officially attached, and that if he was cast as the hero, it would be an insult to the comic character. Ouch. Black was never even supposed to play Hal Jordan. The script had a brand new ring bearer instead, some dude named Judd Plato. So there you have it. In at number six, Batman vs Superman, but good. 
okay, that's really harsh. Now you may be saying, Sasha, are you okay? We already got a Batman v Superman movie. I know it wasn't great, but did you block it entirely from your mind? No, we're talking about a different one. One without Jolly Ranchers and Sweet Tea. This film was also supposed to be happening in the early 2000s, 2002 to be exact. Its working title was Asylum, and it was meant to be a way to reignite both franchises, as Superman was coming off of Superman 4, and Batman was coming off of the Schumacher era. They knew that there was potential in these properties, but how best to bring it out? This was being pitched along with several other projects, some that are coming up or have already been mentioned on this list, all at the same time, just throwing ideas at the wall to see what would stick. This one was in the Phantom casting mode, starring Jude Law and Colin Farrell as Batman and Superman. This was not set to be really connected to any of the previous films, so if it had happened, it may have suffered from BVS syndrome of having to do a lot in a short span of time. Who knows? It might have been worse. Don't look at me. You don't know. Young Dumbledore, though. <laughs> Young Dumbledore? <laughs> Up next at five, the Green Arrow prison film. Affectionately referred to as Green Arrow Escape from Supermax, this cinematic dud was once a venture pushed by David S. Goyer, the man who had co written Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy and the Blade trilogy. He also worked with Zack Snyder on Man of Steel, but. I'll let that one slide. Anywho, he once spearheaded an attempt to get a Green Arrow film going, one whose plot revolved around Oliver Queen becoming incarcerated for a crime that he did not commit, having been framed for an assassination of a high ranking government official. Locked up with the villains that he had helped put away, he ends up forming partnerships with members of his rogues gallery in a scheme to escape the Max security facility. The co writer of the script even told MTV that he used his previous architecture education to design the prison itself, and that it was a character. Villains who would have made an appearance included Edward. Enigma and Lex Luthor, and Goyer even promised a Joker Easter egg. All seemed as if it were on track for the film to get made, but then 2008 happened. The MCU released its first installment with Iron Man. Goyer ended up working on other projects, including Nolan's Batman films, until the website Den of Geek asked Goyer about the project in 2015, and he said it was ahead of its time. Oh, I kind of want to see a Supermax movie though, pretty dope. Like Suicide Squad, but. Better. Number four, Batman Year One. Oh, Batman Year One, written by Frank Miller and released throughout 1987. This was a glimpse into Batman's early start as a crime fighter and set up some lasting dynamics, including a new origin for Catwoman that it took years for her to escape. This is considered one of the pinnacle story arcs for Batman and was already adapted into an animated film. And for a time, Darren Aronofsky, known for his character pieces like The Fighter and psychological thrillers such as Black Swan, wanted to make this into a live action reality. This was another one that was taking place after the end of the Schumacher Batman era, an era of bat nipples and ice. This one got to the scripting phase, with Miller and Aronofsky working on the screenplay together. But the pitch was ultimately rejected, because it was rated R, and Warner Brothers wanted to maintain their young viewer base, so an R rated film was out. The duo blame a lot of this on the need for toy sales. Over the years, concept images for the Batmobile and costume have leaked. Ultimately, we know that no one would take over the Batman franchise, and Batman Begins is a very year one-esque, but with a lot of the grit and, well, prostitutes removed. Still, this is a window into what might have been and in the multiverse somewhere, probably was. Up next, number three, Tim Burton's Catwoman. Tim Burton's Batman films hold a special place in many DC fans' hearts. They were the first massive cinematic adaptation of The Cape Crusader and proved to the world how profitable comic book films could be. Turns out Burton had another Batman film in the works, though, a spin off that would never come to fruition a Catwoman film with Michelle Pfeiffer reprising her role. Pfeiffer had purposely been left out of Batman Forever because of it. Penned by Daniel Waters, the screenwriter behind Batman Returns, a development deal had been signed with Warner Brothers in 1994, with Burton attached to direct. Now, according to Waters, the plot of the film revolved around Catwoman having amnesia thanks to the events of Batman Returns, with her going to the DC equivalent of Las Vegas where she encounters other superheroes. And the film would play with making fun of the whole male superhero mythos. But after the success of Batman Forever, which was the highest grossing feature of 1995, Warner Brothers decided not to go down the dark route that the Catwoman script explored, and the film fell into limbo permanently. Instead, in 2004, we got a Catwoman film starring Halle Berry, and well, you know, you know how that one turned out. Number two, Superman Flyby. Even as a working title, that one makes me chuckle. It makes me imagine Superman flying overhead and aggressively chucking care packages at people. This one would have been an early 2000s project helmed by J.J. Abrams, who is everywhere these days. But at the time, he wasn't quite as hot a commodity as he is now. Abrams' goal was to bring Superman back to the big screen after the series had ended on the rather lackluster note of 1987 Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. That was a two, and that's fine. This was going to deal with the extremely influential and popular Death of Superman plot, Kelly's least favorite plot of all time, which is why this is my number. <laughs> 
It wasn't as bad as you say. So needless to say, she's glad this didn't happen. Recently at the time of this recording, the death of Superman and the reign of the Supermen arc have been adapted as animated films, and they're all right. The death of Superman would be a lot to cram into one film. That's a lot of setup. Also, for Superman's great return to be for him to die would have been a bit harsh. Still, would it have been better than Superman Returns? We'll never know. Superman Flyby? Because, well, he's dead. Sometimes dead is better. <laughs> and finally, our last number, Superman Lives. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just so perfect after the previous one. So we are ending off our list with yet another Tim Burton film that never came to be. We are talking Superman Lives, Burton's Man of Steel feature film that starred Nicolas Cage as the titular character. Nick Cage as Clark Kent was something we all needed to see but were horribly deprived of when Warner Brothers thought that Burton's vision cost too lofty. $190 million too lofty that is. And after a year of pre-production, much of the key creatives behind it walked and the film fell into limbo, with WB eventually working with Brian Singer on 2006's Superman Returns instead. A 2015 documentary was even made about Superman Lives, chronicling the behind the scenes events surrounding its cancellation and interviewed those involved with the project's development and conceptual work, including Tim Burton, Kevin Smith, Dan Gilroy, and costume designer Colleen Atwood. In 2017 at TIFF, Nicolas Cage told EW of the unmade movie, I quote, The movie that Tim and I would have made in your imagination is more powerful than any of the Superman movies. And honestly, I kind of believe that. It's the myth. I don't know, that's a cop out. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you're thinking is better than what we would have made. Yeah, but I mean like, coming from Nick Cage, like what must be going on in his head and Tim Burton's head is probably a little like batshit cray. Probably, yeah. I would watch it, that's I, for sure. They I can still watch make it. it now. Yeah. Two views. <laughs> <laughs> We're in, here's our money. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us and watching Top 10 Nerd. This double was a lot of fun. It was fun yeah. to have someone to sass with back and yeah. forth, even if not all of it makes it in. <laughs> Death of Superman. <laughs> that's making it in. Yeah, that's definitely People need it. to know, just like they need to know that I hate Reed. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a shirt made. Oh, I love your shirt design. Yeah. 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 I stay think tuned. they'd like it too. <laughs> so do all the YouTube things. Yes. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more nerdy lists. Yeah. We'll we will see you, see you guys next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.